Hi, my name is Brandon Schlatter, and this is my critical thinking speech. Fraud is much more common than you think. It is committed by individuals and companies daily and costs most businesses on average 5% of their revenue annually. I'm a student at Santa Fe College studying accounting and I'm one semester away from graduating. Through this long journey, I've taken six classes that have been relevant to the topic of fraud, in particular, auditing. In auditing, we went over case studies from large corporations to very small mom and pop companies, and fraud can happen anywhere in between. No one is immune to this, and you have to have the proper safeguards and precautions in place to prevent this. Even after that, fraud is still a possibility. And there are three major, major reasons that fraud does occur and this is commonly known as the fraud triangle. It's composed of opportunity, rationalization, and pressures. The opportunity, someone being able to commit fraud, say they're a cashier or they do deposits at a restaurant and they're the only one who counts the deposit and brings it to the bank and they slip a $10 bill in their pocket. This would be an example of fraud, of course, but also they had the opportunity to do so. Rationalization is usually someone saying, oh, the company owes me this, or you know, I'm not getting paid enough, something along those lines. Or pressures could be anything from financial pressures at home, or say you're a CFO at a company and you really need to hit certain numbers or you're gonna lose your job. So you just manipulate numbers and you're just, you know, you have a reason to do so. So from here, we'll talk about the three different types of fraud that are most common, and that is asset misappropriation, financial statement manipulation, and corruption. Asset misappropriation is the misuse of a company's assets, assets being anything from equipment to cash. So if you steal cash, that's a very easy example of this. But a more complex example would be if you are a car mechanic, and say you work at a Jiffy Lube and you take your buddy's car there on the weekend and you use their parts, their equipment to perform a job and he pays you the money. Well, this would be an example of asset misappropriation as well because their assets are only supposed to be used on work that's done through their company. Financial statement corruption is something commonly done by higher ups. As we spoke before the example with the CFO, well, if he's manipulating the numbers in the financial statements, he might need to meet certain numbers or quotas to keep his job and he's also committing fraud by doing this, not just to the shareholders of the company, but this also affects the, any individuals, uh, the SEC could come after them. There's a large list of people waiting to come after that type of fraud. And the last is corruption. Now this one has some gray area because it can be a vast majority of things, but to keep it simple, we will say a company, an oil company goes to a gas station and they say you're only going to buy our gas and we'll guarantee you at this price and you're only going to buy it from us well something like that might take the fairness of a company out and you don't have the competitive advantages that you would so this is also something that would be corruption something simpler would be if we take an example of the car company tesla for example their most recently produced cars in china the company had stated they had the newest edition of chips equipment in the vehicles but as the new car owners had went into their models they found they were previous editions from the 2.5 version not the 3.0 and this is also fraud now you might ask yourself does this really affect a company in a bad way well as you already know this costs most companies five percent of their revenue annually and that i read in my textbook from albrecht in my fraud course and total U.S. fraud amounts to $50 billion annually. And I read that in an article from Pofeld. And then the most common type of fraud in small businesses, large businesses, is payroll fraud. And this happens in 27% of businesses. This number doubles in small businesses because they don't have as many people to keep eyes on stuff like that. And that can cost a company a lot of money. And I read this in an article from Nichols. So you may ask, ask yourself, is fraud really a big deal in my company? Well, I think it is, and we're going to find a way to solve it. And here's the note.